There's one coming down. Some kind of seed forestry trap here, maybe. So there's a big sprocket in his hand right here. All right, party people. Welcome to Boston. We are, uh, we're at Sergeant's Wharf. Sergeant's, Jesus, I can't talk this morning. Sergeant's Wharf, and I tell you, I am a parallel parking fool with this van. Took me one try to get in there. Uh, squeak scrunch between that car and this van up here. I squeezed it in there. There's not even enough room to open the back door. We drove in from Portsmouth, New Hampshire this morning. Portsmouth, New Hampshire. I'm sorry, I can't even talk. And we're going to do part of the Freedom Trail, right, Pops? That's right, buddy. That's right. And we're rocking the straw hats today. They probably ain't never seen these hats in uh, Boston before, have you? <laughs> probably ain't never seen this either. <laughs> it's going to be 90 degrees, and the highest we've been in in the last two weeks is about when we left Philadelphia, and it was 84. And uh, it's been in the 60s and 70s during the day. So it's going to be a treat today. Streets of Boston. Yeah, I rode one. We're talking about the Segways. I see if Pops want to ride a Segway. There's your old Paul Revere. See it. The British are coming. The British are coming. Yeah, I know that part. So we're just following the Freedom Trail. We're gonna visit some of these buildings. All right, Cops Hill burying ground. Second oldest cemetery in Boston, 1659. Expanded in 1711, approximately 10 feet higher in 1630 than it is today. Have been cut down in the early 19th century to fill in a mill pond. First called Windmill Hill. There's a windmill here for grinding grain. 10,000, 11,000 burials took place between 1660 and 1968. Seven pirates were hung at Copps Hill in 1704. Wow. They didn't even burn me, They didn't do it. Probably wood box. Skulls, wings, other symbols. Gravestone carvers were called stone cutters. They also worked as masons, slaters, bricklayers, wood carvers. I mean, some of these are so old you can't even read the. Body of Mr. Santa Thompson, the wife of Captain Thomas Thompson. 27th year of her age, 1747. Look, there's a skull right there. Seventeen fifty nine. Mr. Robert Duncan, thirtieth year. Man, these guys are young. Thirty years old, twenty seven years old, eighteen oh one. Holy moly! Look at the carvings on these headstones. The, I mean, that's pretty. That's an eighteen oh six gravestone right there. Look at that skull and wings. Miss Sarah Johnson, 1804, like a trophy cup, 1798. That's pretty good carving on a stone like that for back in the day. Is that, those, um, those skull and wings are really popular. 59, he was probably old. Let's see what this says. This looks fairly new. Fascinating people from Boston's history. Look left for the double Worthy Lake gravestone dating from 1718. Worthy Lake was the first keeper of the Boston Light. He and his wife and daughter drowned as they rode to town from Noddles Island on November day. Wow. Snow Hill Street. Is that it right there? Is that Worthy Lake? Yeah. 
God is love. Isaac Duffy, heir to good bitch. Hmm, wonder what that means. This is called Lovejoy Wharf. Boston Gardens. The Celtics. We're heading over Charlestown across this bridge. It's about, it's about a half a mile walk over there. Here's the state police. Marina Station. There's a small little version of that lock. See it there? Locks. They're what? Locks. That's the Colonel Richard Gridley box. It's halfway up. Paul Revere Park. This is right over the Charlestown Bridge, so Powerville Park is right off. Pretty nice. Good place to stop for some shade. Wait, 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 wait. wait. too far from the shipyard where the USS Constitution is. Right, Pop? <laughs> Battle of Bunker Hill, 17 June, 1775. This tablet marks the point where the British reinforcements landed. Oh, Wednesday through Sunday? What's the day? Tuesday through Sunday. Alright, so the USS Constitution is closed. But well, we can see it from here. Wow, that still amazes me from back in the day. Is that a battleship, a destroyer, or a serious cannonage on it? USS Casson Young, DD-793, Destroyer Squadron 30. So it is a destroyer. Besides it, it was recoils. Fletcher class, destroyer is designed to balance speed and weaponry. Spring to protect a greater strategic value. Yes, sir. Served in the Korean conflict and during the 1950s visited the Charleston Navy Yard. It was built in California, commissioned in 1943. Charlestown Naval Yard, Navy Yard. Established in 800, 1800 to build, repair, and supply the nation's warships. For 174 years, it expanded and grew. Thirty foot high. Yeah, at least. Built by the Marines. <laughs> they had to build what they lived in. Dedicated to the men of the Boston Naval Shipyard who made the supreme sacrifice in defense of the country in all wars 1800 to 1950. In memorandum Commander Barry Carl, U.S. Navy 1933-74, died while in the service of the country, De Deputy District Civil Engineer for the Com Commandant of the 1st Naval District. So that's the Marine Barracks over there. That's the Commandant's house. There's a big difference. Hundreds of men, one man, big house. Let's be nice. Built in 1809, a lot of different captains, rear admirals served, uh, stayed here, a lot of different ones, all the way up until 74, 1800 until 1974. That's your uh, standard double level bridge. All right, made it to the Bunker Hill Monument. 
General Israel Putnam of Connecticut helped decide to fortify the Charlestown Peninsula and with Captain Thomas Knowlton commanded Connecticut's forces. Captain Knowlton's company held the rail fence and helped to cover the colonial retreat from Redoubt. But it's tall. The high ground of Breeds Hill found the American colonies to the cause of independence and open field once located here commanded this entire area on the night of June 16, 1775, two months after the fighting at Lexington and Concord, 1,200 colonial militiamen quickly built a small earthen fort. At stone broke on June 17th, the fort stood in the clear view of the British Army in Boston. British cannon from ship and land opened fire. Some 2,200 British soldiers crossed the Charles River and salted the hill. After several bloody attacks, the British troops overran the colonists. The British forces won this ground, but it cost nearly half their men. Colonel William Prescott. Battle of Bunker Hills, 1775. Only some of the colonists over age 30 had combat experience. Colonel Stark and Prescott fought during the Seven Years' War and taking their leadership skills during the battle. The colonists lost this hill, but surprised the British commanders with their bravery and orderly retreat, yet the battle unified 13 colonists. Can you imagine being on this hill, getting bombarded from the water and the land? It's almost a 360 degree fortification you'd have to put up, right? It's on fire until you see the whites of their eyes. This is called Breed's Hill, site of the Battle Bunker Hill, June 17, 1775. Bunker Hill has been designated a Registered National Historic Landmark August 21st, 1935. Yeah. Detail in that door. I bet most people don't even remember John Tyler as president. You remember Daniel Webster? Yeah. Webster's Dictionary? So he was the orator at the... Uh, he talked when they uh, when they uh, raised the monument. There's a picture of Webster right there, or at least a painting of a, a picture of a painting. John Harvard Mall. American soldiers killed June 17, 1775. We got the Connecticut troops. Fry's regiment. And then New Hampshire troops. Reed's regiment, Stark's regiment, 1,500 engaged, 140 killed, 270 wounded, 30 prisoners. The British forces exceeded 2,000, of which 35 were officers, 19 rank and file were killed. American troops were mainly from Massachusetts. So Massachusetts, Connecticut, New Hampshire, basically, were the ones fighting. Training fields for the integral part of moving and landscapes. Muster days, local mission event, here for roll call. The training field where they come out and they do muster and drills and stuff. In honor of the men of Charlestown, where he fought. Preservation of the Union, erected by the city. 1972, that statue was erected. Paul Revere's house. I don't know how much 
you'll be able to see with it being maybe a little bit darker. Here. We got to watch our heads. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. There's no photographer. No photographer. Oh, this is a much better view. Can't get the other side of it because you just see a reflection with all this shadow out here, but that's the Paul Revere bell. There's a mortar made by, possibly made by Paul Revere. This bronze bell was cast in 1804. The Bell and Cannon Foundry of Paul Revere and Son it was sold in 1805 to a church. Revere cast his first bell in 1792 for his own church. 75% copper, 21% tin, 4% other metals. Weighs 784 pounds. $413.78 at 43 cents a pound. <laughs> John Francis Fitzgerald, Mayor of Boston, 1863 to 1950. Back to 1958, Traffic Tunnel Administration. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.